Hello everybody, Flick here and welcome to my weekly vlog and it's a bit of a special one because this just arrived this morning. It's my Japanese candy for August from Akashi Connection, as you can see. It just arrived, I have not opened it, so I'm going to open it on camera. I don't know if this month has a, fe a theme, rather, they usually try and have it as some kind of theme. So I guess we'll see. So I have cut off the, uh, the sellotape, but I haven't looked inside at all. And I won't look at the leaflet until after I'm done. So. Let's have a look at this. Also, I'll be going through the comments on last week's Let's Chat, and then that's about it. That's all I've got planned. So, without further ado, let me just... Hang on, I need to look down to... I thought I got rid of all the cell day, but apparently I didn't. Get open, damn it. There we are. There, yep. Done. Alright, let's have a little gander. I'll let you see it first. I'll sound a bit muffled if I do this, but whatever. Get rid of that because that's spoilers. All right, it looks like we've got a fair selection of stuff. It's it's a bit light, so I'm thinking that it's mostly kind of like wafers and crisps and stuff. But anyway, I, I guess I'll just pick up stuff as they appear. Got the leaflet for if I'm confused about what anything is, I'll put that down there. I'm not going to have any room for all this stuff usually. All right, the biggest thing. What is this? Calbee, that's a very common brand. I would say, you, we'll, we'll guess and then I'll check because I have the leaflet. So that looks like it's going to be honey dipped, maybe with herbs as well, some kind of wafer biscuit or no, not wafer, but you know what I mean, light crisp. But that's definitely honey over there. On the back, it looks like it's saying cheese, honey, celery and something else. Is that what that says? That is a bizarre mix if that's what that is. Right, we'll put that over there for now. Next. Oh, it's like little mini pizzas. I think that's what that's supposed to be. Oh, there we go. It's kind of zoomed in. Or, what do you call them again? Boulevons? No, that's not the word. What's the word? Canopy, but posher. I don't know. I think that might be what those are. I might say in the leaflet. I'll have a look afterwards. I assume they aren't pizza flavour. I don't know what that's signifying over there. Almonds maybe? Something like almond cake or or walnut cake? Looks nice. Uh, let's see. Ah, these I'm very familiar with because my sister likes them. I thought they were Australian actually. But yeah, they're little panda biscuits filled with, I assume in this case it's vanilla or white chocolate. They're nice. They're fine. You can get these in import aisles and supermarkets though so they're not that fancy but that's fine so there's another thing oh there's little things little millions I think just tiny little bags that'll be great flavor that'll be soda flavor because those are the two flavors you commonly get in Japan the little which way am I pointing there the light millions if you're familiar with them I think I guess I'll know when to try them Hawaii Pretz. This is pineapple flavoured pretzel sticks, I think. Would you agree? Maybe pineapple and mango flavour? Oh, you have Thailand flavour, you have China flavour, you have Canada flavour, and you have Hawaii, and they've given me Hawaii. Canada looks like pancakes and maple syrup. China looks like some kind of beef dish. Thailand looks like some kind of... Uh, this probably won't zoom in. Nope. Nope, nope. Well, that's what I was reading anyway. So they do like, oh, they, they, yeah, there we are. They do country themed flavored pretzels. That's a little weird. Oh, I've had one of these before in an Okashi Connection box. I've had, I think I tried this on camera, didn't I? Because you pick it up, you open it and you crush it. And then it's like, it's raw noodles, but they're flavored. So what flavor would you say that is? It looks like just ramen again, actually. Or was it chicken and garlic last time? It was quite a few months ago now, so I can't actually remember. Choco chips, high quality mini choco chip cookies. All right, that's fair enough. Just mini chocolate chip cookies. Quite a big bag, actually, for being mini. But I know mini's referring to the size of the cookies. Uh, what is this? This is, oh, I've had one of these before as well, though this looks like it's grape flavor. The other one I had of this was energy drink flavor. And yes, that is confusing. So that looks like it might be a bit better. It's in the shape of like a hand or a foot sometimes, and very clearly grape. 
so that's fine. All right, yeah, that's that's good enough. A few more things here. Hang on, I'll just lift them out and then put the box down on the floor. I think I've actually seen these advertised on a YouTube channel I watch, which monthly does collections of weird and wonderful Japanese adverts. So they're obviously great flavor. Oh wait, no, that's cherry. <laughs> yeah, cherry flavored, hard candy. They're very yeah, they're quite hard. They're for sucking on. It's fine. I like cherry flavored stuff. Well, I don't know what this is, but it's a very colourful bag. Look at that. Well, I guess it's strips, but it looks like they've got stuff in it. And on the back, would you say that's dragon fruit plus passion fruit, if I had to guess? It's not quite zooming in. I think that's what that's a picture of. The bone on the bottom is dragon fruit for sure, right? I've seen it in the supermarket. And finally, we have Toroto. Strawberry filled... Strawberry filled something or other, and it's advertising an anime in the bottom left. See that? It's like a wafer, or I don't think it's chocolate because it doesn't have the right texture, but it's filled with strawberry stuff. Well, we can get our answers. So this is the August box. This is the kind of leaflet you get, just with information about all the stuff, and if there's a DIY one it usually tells you how to put it together, etc. So the first things were butter chips, and they are their honey pars parsley mascarpone cheese. Bloody hell, that is a bizarre mix. I might end this by trying one of them. I'll end because it could be horrible. Uh, the tor uh, Toroto strawberry things are... What does this say here? Chocolate for hot summer months. Chocolate being baked. Rich creamy strawberry filling. Absolutely wonderful. The crushed thing is ramen flavour. The Pritz is Hawaii pineapple flavour. That is going to be bizarre. Oh hey, I was half right. It's dragon fruit and flat lemon. Then you've got cherry hard candy. The koala... Oh, cotton candy flavour. Interesting. The energy drink thing was gummy grape. And then we've got... Oh yeah, what, were those, what was that big box? Carito Florentine Cookies. Those things. That one. Several different flavours of cookies. Most of them are basic, but this Florentine really caught our attention. The Florentine is a cookie biscuit made with nuts. Almonds in this case, so that's why they were on the back. Baked with sugar, so it's really crispy and thin. These are indeed crunchy and have a satis I almost covered my there. <laughs> and have a satisfying almond flavour to them. Alright. Sounds interesting. Then you just got chocolate chip. That's nothing special. And then the little million type things. Pill pieces of chewy candy. Yeah, it's the Japanese equivalent of millions, if you know what those are. I don't know if they're in America. I would I would think so. So that's what's in the Okashi Connection box for August. I get one of these every month. Sometimes it pairs up but when I do these vlogs, sometimes it's after so there isn't as much to show off. I usually only show off stuff that I think is really, really unique to Japanese food. But in this case the box arrived on the day I was going to record this so it was perfect timing. So there's the whole box. I might try one of those weird... what was it again? Honey, parsnip and mascarpone. I'll, I'll try one at the end. Alright, but anyway, let us get through the comments on last week's Let's Chat first. Also, apologies if my voice sounds harsh, hoarse, it's hay fever, still. We're into August and it's, it's kicking my ass, it's kicking my mother's ass, it's just, it's not going away and it's horrible. Oh, by the way, in a rebirth run sometime, I haven't recorded it yet, but I'm going to talk about a little story where I almost got locked in a medical practice recently. You might enjoy hearing that, but I'd rather be playing something while I'm discussing that. So anyway, Good Rory said he thinks an hour of Warframe again is needed. I disagree, and so does everybody. Reaper says, I just never got into the XCOM style of game, but zombie games I liked watching. Both Dead Rising 3 and Dying Light were pretty funny. Thank you. Work and family reunions have co uh, caused me to miss out on a lot of Steam nights. That's true, you've missed the last two, and there's another one tonight that I don't know if you're going to be at. Must hunt or cross hype, I have a feeling you might actually die on this one since you might not be able to do that much online. Yeah, that's true. I died in Monster Hunter 4 when I was playing the Japanese version of that. Because I worry less about armor skills and stuff because I have to go looking for translations and things. So have you heard about the FF12 remaster remake rumor? Yes, it was a mistranslation or misunderstanding and does not seem to be the case. What is getting remade is Resident Evil 2 and as long as they do it like the old GameCube remixes of Resident Evil 1 well, and it wasn't a remix, but in the same engine, Resident Evil Zero, it'll be really, really, really good. 
If they try and do something like they did with 4, 5, 6, they'll fuck it up badly and it'll be terrible. I suppose a middle ground might be Rev uh, Resident Evil Revelations, but I really loved Resident Evil 2, so I hope they do it justice, because it probably is the best Resident Evil. The first one's got that nostalgia factor for me, and I liked the fourth one, but the second one, it was it was better than the original in every way, it was longer, and it gave you essentially four games, because you had the A and B story for Claire and Leon. So, it, it's got a lot of content, and I hope they don't mess it up. Hell, even if they just upscaled the original, that'd be great too. I was considering doing a playthrough of the original, but I don't remember it that well. But anyway, Dragonakis, you've been increasing the frequency of the phrase, that's the long and the short of it, Not noticed it's been quite uh, used quite a few times in videos. Why would you tell me that? Now my OCD is going to bug me every time I notice myself saying it. It won't stop me saying it, it'll just bother me when I catch myself doing it. I guess it's because it's the quick way, you know, it's like saying, it's, it's a vocal tick. It's like saying in a conversation, she turned around and said, he turned around and said. If you imagine that people are just apparently rotating 360 degrees when they're having conversations, it's stupid, but it's just it's a vocal tick to fill space. Although I think in that case it is just me wanting to get to the, the point of the conversation rather than blather on like I am now. It's it's a it's a way for me to get to the end of the conversation quickly, I guess. Uh, so Serp Sloth says, Hey Flake, do you think they will release Monster Hunter Cross outside of Japan? In all honesty, no. I think there's going to be a, a cross G version because that's it's, it's how they do things. And I think that version will get translated. I don't think Monster Hunter Cross will. I wish it was. I wish it would. But I don't think it will. I, I could definitely be proven wrong. I mean, we're at... Is there any other good or large scale Western game conferences this year still? They've, they've had all their opportunities to reveal it happening. And with the Japanese version so close to release, I, I honestly don't think so. Which is a shame, believe me. But but I do think it will appear sometime. I just think it will be a U version with like G rank thrown in and stuff. So Jason Inigo says he likes XCOM, or he liked the XCOM series a lot. Look forward to them when you are posting them. Thank you, and I hope that will be the same once I start covering XCOM 2. Which I am massively, massively looking forward to. That, Fallout 4, Storm 4... What else? There's something else I'm really looking for. Well, cross, but we discussed that. All that stuff. I'm looking massively forward to hopefully being able to do coverage of all of them. So Alex Riley says, anyone who hasn't enjoyed the magic of captions on YouTube should try it. My nose cheese is a highlight this week. So if you don't know, you can turn on like annotations when you're watching a video and it will attempt to do subtitles, automatic subtitles for what you're watching. The problem is it doesn't understand certain accents you have to be very clear in your speech for it to accurately pick up what you're saying. So if you have an accent, like I do, sometimes talk a bit too quick, like I do, sometimes have a bit of a accent-related slur or lack of diction, like I do, it's going to not translate me correctly, but it is very hilarious. I do it in some videos as well, and it's, it's great fun. So there's actually not a lot of questions. We've only got a few more to go through here. So Grinning Owl, sorry I'm stretching, I really need to stretch, there we are. So Grinning Owl was posting about the, the reason that American chocolate doesn't taste very good compared to others is apparently it has a large amount of wax in it so that in higher temperatures, like you get in the US, it isn't melting on the shelf or, you know, etc. So apparently that is the reason that it tastes so bad, it's made with a wax and certain different companies use certain different amounts so that it adjusts the melting temperature of the chocolate. I find that very interesting. So that's, that's also you're saying that YouTube is apparently still deleting your comments. I don't understand that at all. I saw this one though, and it says you edited it. So well, but you, I bet you edited it in saying that it ate your comment. Are you posting from a private network or an open network or something like that? Something is causing it not to even get to YouTube. It, it's something with the posting. But I see that one, it's right there. I see you posted it four days ago. And then you edited in, edit, edited in. See what I mean about diction? I'd love to see what the auto translator thing did for that. Yeah, so that's interesting. So it's wax. So when you eat a lot of American chocolate, you're eating wax. Jolly good. Red says, uh, yeah, flick, I had the numbers thing from an email notification. Also, I can make comments now, hurrah. Is that thanks to Dragonakis helping you out? Because he seemed to know what was causing the problem. So I'm glad it's sorted. 
By the way, I don't know if you'll see this, but a couple of new people have been commenting on Monster Hunter videos recently. Thanks to your G Plus settings, I can't reply to you. If you have your profile set to private or something like that, and you make a comment on a video, no one gets the reply button. So, I, I do see your comments and I would love to reply to them, but I can't. Uh, three more comments. Liam Ferris says, When that ice cream van came, I was hoping for Flick to run out and get an ice cream. Just do a cut and then have an ice cream. I could totally do that. But the weather isn't that great. No, oh, actually, no. It, it's it's okay. Pardon me. Is ice cream van due? No. It's about an hour until it would be arriving, so I can't wait that long, sadly. Aston Castellanos asks, What kind of controller do I use for Ark Survival Evolved? I use... Oh, I was not going to stretch, I was going to show off my mouse and be a bit of a smarmy git. I use mouse and keyboard. It's not out on consoles yet as far as I'm aware, maybe it is. But either way, I just use mouse and keyboard. I, I find that easier. It is controller compatible on PC though, I think. But no, I just keyboard and mouse. For most first person games I would prefer that. I don't mind using a, using Joe Analog Stick kind of setup for a first person thing, but I prefer mouse and keyboard. So the final comment was from G. Andrews, who has left four questions. Now, luckily, because you're the last comment, that means I can go through it by each point and not forget. But I will also quickly hang on through with me. We'll get them ready. Honey, parsley, mascarpone. It sounds like a porno waiting to happen. So, G. Andrews says, I have purchased ARC, however, my sad pathetic excuse of a PC couldn't run it, even though it said it met the minimum requirements. Well, in that case, I hope you got a Steam refund on it. Have you considered doing some Assassin's Creed Unity co-op on camera? I don't have PSN Plus, and I was given the PS4 version for review, so, no, can't. If I had it, would I have? I guess so, but it bothers me that they got rid of the... The versus mode. The versus modes in Assassin's Creed games of recent date, anyway, are the best part. They kind of messed it up in. What was the last one I played in? Not three. Was there a game after three but before Unity? No, oh, maybe it was three. No, it was in Assassin's Creed three. They messed up the adversarial online totally, which is a shame because it was so good. Also, what are your thoughts on Assassin's Creed Syndicate? Bored. Don't care. It'll be the same as all the other ones. It's Ubisoft game. It, it's Ubisoft game. <laughs> it's their same formula that's tedious. Which is a shame. They are doing some different stuff, though, you know, away from Assassin's Creed. They really just need to either do a modern day one, retcon it, or just bury it. It's lost all interest for me after Assassin's Creed 3. I didn't pay attention to anything after that. I played Unity as a standalone game. I didn't uh, care about, you know, the, the real life stuff in it. It was fine. It was okay, I didn't have any of the glitches that people experienced, so... But it still ended up being a boring, stereotypical Assassin's Creed game. And Syndicate is going to be exactly the same thing. They've done the gang thing before. In one of the Ezio games you could do a gang thing. So no, it's, it's not worth the time, I think. Have you ever, or would you be willing to show a picture of your workstation? I've been curious about how your desk is set up. If you look on Twitter, it'd be a while ago now, but when I first got my dual monitor set up, like monitor here, monitor here, microphone is kind of like right here, I posted a picture of the desk. It was a lot less cluttered back then. I think the only other thing on it was my Monster Hunter 4 figurine. So if you want to see that, that's there. I've got a chest of drawers here with my normal TV sitting on it, so it's like almost like three monitors. PC monitor one, PC monitor two, TV there, which is a bit of an old one, but still pretty good. Next to that, I've got like a, a three-tier platform. Top one's got my Wii U and PS4. Middle one has old controllers and spare wires. Bottom one has PS3, and then under that, under that is all the wires which go into the plugs around here. Nothing much to see. That, that's about it. And I've got a few statues next to my TV here. I've got the um, the farm armor guy from Dark Souls 2 and stuff like that. Some of the stuff I got from Zbox and Loot Crate. That kind of thing. Not a fancy workstation at all, and I'm putting it off for long enough, so you know what? Let's do it. Let's do it. It smells of ready salted crisps. Yeah, it actually just smells of ready salted, that's strange. Quite big crisps actually, isn't it? Quite a full bag as well, I suppose. I can taste the honey. 
crisp shouldn't taste of honey. That's that's not that's not right. I taste a little bit of the cheese as well, but the honey is the thing that's standing out because crisp should not taste of honey. That's bizarre. <laughs> you know what? I kind of like it. Once I get over the fact that crisp shouldn't taste of honey, I, d I don't mind the taste of honey. Oh, also, I forgot to point out you actually said um, a fourth point. I just went through three of them. I, you were the last question and I still missed your final point. I have a terrible attention span. Alright, the aftertaste is, is very prominent, but that's not as bad as I was thinking. They're quite nice. So sorry, anyway. Last month on our night you pointed out that you actually dropped your 2DS and it seemed to be broken and you couldn't get a warranty thingy fix on it. But you say everything seems to be okay now, but the volume tab is broken. This is made worse by the fact that it broke while at full volume so you can't turn it down. I have to use the headphone jack. Hang in there, skeleton. I am really disappointed that all it took for you to break your 2DS was to drop it once. Was it on a hard floor at an angle or something? Because if you're dropping it onto a carpeted floor, it most definitely should not have broken. Let me know actually, I'm curious. Did you drop it on a carpeted floor, a hard floor, you know, wood or whatever? Did it land on its side? Did it land on its... did it land flat? Did it land on its screens? My, my impression normally is that for all the faults Nintendo has, they make sturdy handhelds. And I would have thought that the 2DS, given that it's more a more simple version of the 3DS, would be especially sturdy. So I'm, I'm curious. Ice cream van. It's not there. It's, it's in the distance, but I can hear it. It's coming, but I don't need an ice cream. I've got plenty of other stuff to try. Shall I end with one more try? I'm really curious about pineapple flavoured pretzel sticks. Again, this, this is a thing which should not exist. But I'm going to try it. Even though my mouth tastes of crisp flavoured like honey. Let's do it. Pineapple flavoured breadstick things are... I don't. I keep on calling them pretzels because the brand is Pretz, but... I don't know if you would class what's inside here as pretzels, because they're going to be sticks, right? Yeah. <laughs> Crisps shouldn't take a smell of pineapple, but they do. It sm oh, it made my eyes water, actually, but it, yeah, it, it smells really strongly of pineapple. That's what they look like, just, you know. Oh my god, that's so weird. That is just so bizarre. It's, it, I mean, it is pineapple, but... It's making my eyes water again for some reason. The, the flavouring is just horrible. I mean, well, it's not horrible, but... It's so jarring to have a biscuit that tastes of pineapple. Or Chris Webby class this as. <laughs> That's so bizarre. I think it's messing up my taste buds. They they, they are confused. <clears throat> they are confused rather. Because that isn't what you're expecting when you put it in your mouth. I mean I can't say I hate it. It's just it's so bizarre. That's what we're gonna end on. I've eaten a pretzel that tastes of pineapple and a crisp that tastes of honey. Japan! <laughs> Hope you enjoyed. I shall see you next Monday for another vlog. Until then, ta-ta, for now.